about that time of year. We're gonna get the 8520 pulled out, get it serviced, get it ready for planting season. got a few items we need to move out of the way. It's going on, Mustard. I'm just checking out the freshly painted 8640 that we're selling. All painted up, looking really nice. It makes someone a nice tractor. It's got a 855 Cummins, three-point PTO, 360 horsepower, 12-foot blade on it, two-way. Oh. Uh, for all you Chevy lovers, yeah. Take notes, look what we're doing. We're pushing it. It can happen to anything. It just more so happens to Chevys though, right? Runaway Chevy. Fire this bad girl up, huh? You got the 1980s, big horse, and the 2010s, big horse. <laughs> Five twenties turn. Be known for having dead batteries. Oh yeah. Eighty five twenty. She's seen a few days. That's for sure. We love her though. She's a snappy little girl. Well, uh, we couldn't quite get her over the hump here, so we're going to give her a little tug. There it is, back, back into a comative state. To the shop we make it. Hey, peg leg. Look at that little, little trooper. All right. 8520 nestled in here. Did a little quick shuffling. What is that? The first seed delivery of the year. Middle coop from our cousin McCain down by Cantrill, Iowa. We've got 3212 VT2 Pro Rib. This is a 112 day variety going on some bean stubble. Pretty excited for it. We're going to put it up against the the king. The king. The Thir pioneer. 1366. The monster. It'll be an interesting test this year. We're, uh, we're looking forward to it. Yep. We get the oil change, change the fuel filters, try to fix this light here, change the hydraulic filter, all the air filters, get the globe in, get the monitor in, should be ready to go. Looks like Bounty Badger's gonna change oil on that 250. Bucky's working on the 4020. And we're going to drain the hub oil out and change that on these front hubs. Oh, I just missed you getting your hand all dirty. Oh well. I'm going to attempt to take these off. We can try to see if the trunk is light. Alright, I got the piece of crap off. Hopefully that all that happened is these just came loose and this fell out, vibrated loose. So hopefully I can just Press it back in there and tighten those up. Seven millimeter it is. Got the light in for the time being. Not sure how long it's gonna stay, but we put some self tappers on the side of this to hold it up there because it's totally falling apart. Just how it's ever been. It ain't pretty, but it'll do. They all work it up there? Perfect. I'm gonna clean the cab out, I think. Sounds like a good idea. I don't know if you can tell, but my cheeks are all puffed up. Just got my wisdom teeth out, like, on Tuesday. Today's Saturday, so four days ago. It's a little sore, but I'm feeling pretty good, so I came out and do some stuff. I've been laid up, working on some videos, stuff like that. This is our grain cart monitor. And I gotta take this out so we can put our planter monitor in here. We gotta get the globe up top. 
We got a Starfire 6000. Already got the fold box in here that always stays in here. Got the bulk of all the big stuff out. Got a pile here of stuff that I need to keep. Mustard just finished changing the fuel filters. Just got the oil all done. I got the grain cart scale monitor out and finished cleaning out. First up, I'm gonna sweep up all the dirt and stocks and stuff. And this is easy just to get all the big stuff first. Wipe down the floor. I usually just take glass cleaner, wet it up, take some paper towels, and wipe it down. It's probably not the right thing to do, but it seems to work all right. Got the floor somewhat, all the bulk of the dirt out of the cracks. Take some Meguiar's interior detail cleaner, spray it down, use this little brushy, get nice and in there deep like, and go back over it with this, wipe it down, give that nice looking gloss. Just putting a little bit of glass cleaner in there just to give it a little more. Yeah, that's awesome. I really want to try this. About time to start taking care of something around here. Epic. Beautiful. Did the top shelf. Did the steering column. That looks nice. Stuff's pretty sweet. Got the screen in. Globes on. But you see here, green star come up. I don't have connection here, so I'll have to get it set up when we uh, get the planner hooked up and get ready to roll. Saying is, oh, they're probably on C and D. Oh, you're getting too much. Le you leave the daylight in. What are you doing? Hold on. He, you can't see the letters as you're trying. trying to figure out how to hook up this electrical so we can run the grapple because they run off a switch. Same hydraulics. You flip a switch, it does one. Flip a switch, does the other. So nine pins. Yeah. Bucky didn't want me to start plugging and playing. He thought I was going to blow up because yeah, he's over don't, dramatic. Don't but do that. Whatever. Oh, we got it. <laughs> hey, Derek. What? Remember when you were getting all butthurt about just trying random well, connections? Well, okay, so Dad's like, what's it on, B and C? I was like, no, you said C hey, and wait D. wait a minute. Let's see if it even works. It works. Look at that. Crunch. Put on C and D. We're like, okay, well, if, we're, if the wires are backwards, we'll just switch them. And Dad's like, what do you got it on B and C? You know, because you can't read the letters. I was like, no, it's a C and D. And he's like, no. Those it needs, anyways. I figured it out. Decker's like, let's just plug it in and just start winging it. And I was like, okay, well, we're gonna blow fuses. We're gonna short stuff out. So I was like, let's just try B and C. And I knew Decker sitting over there like, if this works, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna rub this right in his face. Oh, uh, sure and enough, it, it worked. It works. <laughs> it worked. Hey Devin, I'll give you 50 bucks if you get in there. I think the 8520 is all ready to go, bud. Oh, you know, bud. It's an old tractor, 8225 8, hours. 
So we're gonna run her. She's been solid. Pulls the planter good. Nice tractor. I think Bucky's got the uh, 4020 all done. Got the load shaft seals done. Got the JCB up and going. That was nice. Badger got the uh, oil change in that 250. So that's ready for spring. Hey, for the viewers, we have a secret. Maybe later this week, so stay tuned about this. I'll see you tomorrow. Did you know that uh, these are both 20 series tractors? Yeah, they're the same, the same, uh, same series here. We got 20 series and another 20 series. I haven't really shown this yet. We put some uh, bulk reservoir tanks on the side. We're gonna have coolant, hydraulic, motor oil, got a valve. He sold 25? 20. So yeah, we're pretty pumped to use these. All right, we're back. Today's March 21st. You know what that means? Yesterday marked officially spring. You saw us get the 8520 all serviced up, detailed, ready to roll. Now it's time to finish the piece of the puzzle. Gonna get the planter hooked up today. I know we got a few things we gotta replace. One of these air clutches for the shutoffs is not working. And then I think one of these lines is leaking somewhere too. These are obviously good. Disc openers, Bucky says they're good. Gauge wheels, just need to adjust them. As far as the closing wheels, I mean they're good, but convince Honey Badger to try to get some copper heads for them. If you don't know what copper heads are, they're kind of spiked closing wheels, and they do a little bit better job of closing the trench and firming the seat in there a little better over the traditional uh, rubber round first things first we got to get the 4430 started and get it out of the way we'll just let her run for a little bit needs to run beast mode just imagine it's about 1985 you got a 4430, it's your planter tractor, pulling a 12 row planter. You got 8640, Kinsey Repower, it's a big tillage boy back then. Oh, those were the days, even though I wasn't alive to witness it. I just know those were the days. All right, hey Blazer. Get a few pieces of equipment moved out of the way. And uh, get the 8520 out. take it down there I'm gonna take the drawbar off real quick we always take the drawbar off and we hook the planter up that way it's not in the way of any hoses or anything like that it gets snagged up gets caught That's all there is to it it's just this little uh, 15 millimeter bolt comes right up on here holds that pin in that's what holds the drawbar on uh, kind of amazing you pulling you know 80,000 pounds grain cart and uh, full load and it's this uh, one little guy that keeps it all in there. Now she should be able to pull this sucker out. It's a big boy. I think this is a category four draw bar. Here she goes. Oh, God, I can wheel it wherever I want. Within reason. All done. Look at he split. Easy as that. See that goes in there real quick. Pin butt goes up through that hole. That just holds it in there. Just leave it on there so I don't lose it. Next thing you know, you go to put the draw back on back this fall time and hook the grain cart up and can't find the pin. You're like, what the heck? Just leave it in there. Get her tight and she ain't going to the moon. Go to your home. As most of you might know, if you don't, 
a lot of times what happens is these quick hitches they sit in winter storage for several months and they just get real stiff so this is what you got to do to get them down Well, the easy part's done. Now we're gonna get all this menagerie mangled mess hooked up. It's not as bad as it looks, but it's not as fun as it looks either. I got it pulled outside. I hooked everything up. We're gonna see if it uh, will fold out. Call it a truth. All right. I worked through everything. Got all the kinks worked out. We are ready to roll. First things first, make sure your tractor's in neutral. Next. We need to unfold our wing wheels. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the wing wheel and move the lever one hydraulic. So that's gonna set those down, just like so. Now I'm going to put the three point down a little bit and get the planter out of the saddle. There's two little hooks that hook on the center frame. So once we move the three point down just a little bit, out of those two little hooks there so now it's free I'm gonna come back to my planter box I'm gonna hold fold and move my number one hydraulic there she goes so the reason you want it in neutral is because that planter moves along that bar and you just want everything to be loose and free so you're not binding up or nothing like that So you're locked in there. Now the final thing you do is you switch this switch right here. It says trans and plant. Trans is for transport. So all that sequence I did was under transport. Now I switch that to plant. And what that does is it locks that in so it doesn't move on me. To run the planter, there's basically a few functions. I have two vacuums on each side. One right there, one right there. What those vacuums do, is they are what suck the seed to the seed plate in each individual row unit. That seed plate spins and knocks the seed off. That's how the seed gets from the row unit to the trench with that plate via tube. Blower, which is in the center fill, that's what blows the seed from the center fill out to each individual row. To wrap that all up, we have the blower, blows the seed out, goes to each individual row, then there's the vacuum that sucks the seed to the plate in order to get your spacing on that plate and that plate spins and then it knocks the seat off into the tube down into the trench. Now to operate said planter with said vac, said blower. My blowers are set on hydraulic three and four and you always run them in constant flow. So what I will do is I push that down, push that down You'll begin to hear it. You might not be able to hear it on camera, but you can kind of maybe, probably can't even see that. You can see the dust blowing off the vacuum. Each of the vacuums are sucking, so you can see those are at work. Now to engage the blower, that engages every time you fully put the planter down. So my planter up down is on hydraulic one. So when I put the planter down, I push that all the way forward into what we call detent. It's gonna put the planter all the way down. And then you're gonna to start to hear the blower. That's just a little quick planter run through. They're really quite simple yet complicated. But once you do all that sequence, you're in the ground, you got your vax on, you got your blower on, you got seed in your box, you got your meters in. Put thing in the ground, start moving, she'll start planting. 8640, 443, tucked away for another day. Sweeped up the floor a little bit too. Look at that pile of crap. All from here. Just couldn't stand it anymore. Finally, let's get up to the shop. I 
hope neighbors drive by and see me getting the planter out and they get all nervous thinking we're going to go plant. It's only March 21st. Oh well, it's nice out. Soil temps are warm. Start socking her in, get a head start. Get done before they're even started. I'm just kidding. We got the 8520 and the 1770 up here. Gonna go through in, put uh, my corn meters in. <sighs> Thank you, Mr. Tommy Ben Keel, for hooking us up with some nice uh, buckets to hold our seed meters. And this is where the seed meter goes. Just got this rubber flap pull off and opens right up. This here is the uh, vacuum that I was talking about earlier. The seed comes from the center fill through this tube, comes in this little mini hopper, and then it comes down into here. And then from there, the seed on this side and the pressure suction coming off of this side pulls that seed against the plate and as it spins around it gets knocked off and falls into the trench here's what the disc looks like this is corn because it's got individual so it goes in like this this is where the kernel will sit and suck up against there Put that in there just like that. Twist this little knob. Oh, there we go. Back on she goes. Clamper shut, she's ready to go. The last thing we planted with this was corn, so I don't have to do any switching around. There's a couple little things you switch around in here to switch to corn, but it's already set up. So whenever we get to the point this spring when we switch to beans, I'll show you how that's done. Planner moved it in the shop. We're taking the fenders off, 4020. We're gonna put a roll bar on it. We got 4020 and stuff, so we just laying around like we're the used tractor dealerships. Pretty much. 4020, best tractor ever made. Best tractor ever made. Best tractor in the world. We got weights, we, we got, got fenders. We got double slab weight brackets. We got single slab weight brackets. It'll pull a retro, it'll pull a John Deere and Jacksonburg planter at 10 mile an hour easily. 12 row, central fill on a 4020 with duels. That'd be cool. Maybe a 12 row central fill. I think you'd do it. Sweet. <laughs> oh, there she is. Yeah, what are you thinking? Yeah, the whole, the whole world is our shop. Exactly. Hey! Ah! Sorry to ruin the party. This is a good tool to have. Anyone ever seen this? This is a 420 John Deere mower with a Honda repower in it. Yeah. Basically, we just called a Kinsey repower. Oh, it's a pig. So, what do we got going on here other than the obvious? The obvious. Ran down to my dad's and we picked up. He had some tires hiding out. Check this out. And a little upgrade, a little new rubbers. What do you think? <laughs> is it a little overkill? Yes. We're going to get a little Cali lean going. Uh, our pipe dream was to. We have an extra brown box from our old 9420. It's just a pipe dream. Getting another 3000 globe. Yeah. Getting auto steer on this. I don't know, that's just a pipe dream. Maybe it'll happen, probably won't. Got the brand new John Deere with a lift kit. Would look a heck of a lot better with me up in it. Oh, yeah. There she is. Hey, would you quit jacking around? No. I'm gonna put this jack together and that's gonna be it for this one. Thanks for watching. See you in the funnies.